Hi everyone, today I'm going to go through an example on how to design a simple steel beam. I've written out uh, an example, so feel free to pause the video and copy it if you would like to follow it through with me. So to break down the example, the first bit of information we're given is it's a 5 meter span for the steel beam and it's supported off the walls at each end of pad stones. And when it supports off pad stones, it implies that it's going to be a simply supported condition. The steel beam supports a timber floor spanning from both sides with spans of four meters. So the floors are each have a four meter span onto the beam. The beam also supports a 2.5 meter high solid masonry wall. So we will need to consider the weight of the wall as well. I given some typical dead and live loads as well as a wall density to allow you to calculate the wall dead load. Drawing a diagram is going to help you visualize where the loads are coming from and it also helps understand the problem at hand. Labels, diagrams, dimensions, anything that you want that you think will help you understand the problem more and also to help whoever's reading it understand it as well. What I probably should have done from the start is just highlight some of the key bits of information from the example text. So I'm highlighting that now. Next, we need to define the loads we're gonna use for the analysis. So first, the dead load from the floor, which in Eurocode we denote as GK. Uh, we've already been given that the floor plan area load is 0.75. So, and we're, all, and we're also told that the joists on either side span four meters. So from the left-hand side, two meters of it is spanning onto the beam and two meters of it is spanning onto the wall. And on the right-hand side, it's the same. So therefore two plus two is four. So 0.75 times four gives you your three kilonewtons per meter. Now it's pretty much the same with the imposed load from the floor. So it's 2.5 times four is 10. Next, we have the dead load from the wall. Uh, the wall is a dead load, not an imposed load. Uh, so given that the wall is 200 mil thick, so it's 0.2 times the density of 22 times its height, which is 2.5 meters, which gives us 11 kilonewtons per meter. Here we define the dead and live load combination factors from Eurocodes. So the dead load factor we're going to use as 1.35 and an imposed load factor of 1.5. Next, we're going to work out the total loads of unfactored and factored loads. Um, so the first line we're going to go factored, which works out as 33.9 kilonewton meters per meter, sorry. Uh, and we're going to put that in brackets as ultimate limit state. And that just makes sure that we know that's the factored combination. Uh, next, we're going to work out the unfactored load, which is, <laughs> which I've written here incorrectly as 14 kilonewton per meter. Uh, it should be 24, which I correct later. And next to it in brackets, we're going to put SLS, which um, stands for serviceability limit state. So once we've defined the loads, we can go ahead and analyze the beam. So we're just going to draw a simple little diagram. So beam five meters long, it's on simple supports and uh, with the squiggly line over it means it's a UDL. How do we know it's a UDL? Well, I've told you that it's uh, floor joists spanning on and you know, we can assume that four joists will be uniformly distributed and a wall on a beam is also going to be uniformly distributed. So all the loads together are all going to be a UDL. So now we're going to work out the design bending moment, which we label as MED. And for a uh, simply supported beam with a UDL, the equation is WL squared upon eight, which you basically need to memorize off by heart. It's pretty easy, you'll be using this constantly. Um, so now we're gonna take the total factored load times by the span of five meters squared, divided by eight, and we get 106 kilonewton meters. So then we need to work out the design shear, uh, and that is WL over two, plug those numbers in and get 85 kilonewtons. So next we need to define what the deflection limits are. And there's a few limits which we can apply. 
uh, and they will all give slightly different results, which we need to check. So first of all, we've got span over 250, span over 500, and span over 360. Span over 250 is where you use the total load, dead and live combined. Span over 500 is where you use dead load only. And span over 360 is where you use your live load only. Now that we know what deflection limits we're going to be working to, we can work out the second moment of area required to meet those deflection limits. Now you may have seen this equation before where you're trying to find deflection, uh, but now simply just rearrange the equation so that you're trying to work out I because you, you've got your deflection limit. So that equation for a UDL, it's different for other load combinations, but for a UDL simply supported beam, this is the equation. So it's five over 384 times W L to the four over Young's modulus of steel times your deflection limit. Now, for some reason, graduates get this wrong all the time, not because they put the wrong numbers in, but because they can't work out their units properly. For whatever reason, I'm really used to working everything out into newtons and millimeters. So I convert all my values into newtons and millimeters into this equation. Remember that deflection is a serviceability limit state. So when you put in the values for W, you're using the SLS load, which we calculated, not the factored load. Because we're using everything in millimeters, when you put the numbers in for the length, L, you need to put that in millimeters. So five meters is 5,000 millimeters to the four. So the Young's modulus of steel is 205 times 10 to the three newtons per millimeter squared. Deflection, as we know it, is in millimeters. You can see here why after putting 20 millimeters, I put times 10 to the four. And that times 10 to the four is to convert the answer, which would have been in millimeters to the four, into centimeters to the four. Now there's a really good reason for that. It's because we're gonna be using the blue book of steel properties. And in the blue book, they give the, um, the second moment of area in centimeters to the four. Now that we've worked out the second moment of area required, we can now go onto the blue book and find an appropriate steel section size. We are going to be using a universal beam section or a UB. Now you can either go to dimensions and properties to get the second moment of area, or you can go straight to buckling resistance moment, S355, which is steel grade, to get the second moment of area and also the bending moment resistance, which we would need to check against for design bending moment. So once you click into buckling resistance moment, you're going to be presented with a huge list of all the UB beams you can find. Um, so you need to scroll all the way down to find an appropriate beam. And all the way onto the right hand side of this large sheet, you are going to find the second moment of area. So what you need to do is find a value of the second moment of area, which is greater than the second moment of area required, which we just calculated. Now that we found the right second moment of area to use, we now need to check that the bending moment resistance of that steel section is also going to be adequate. We are assuming that the beam is going to be fully laterally restrained because of the joist and the wall spanning onto it. So all you need to do is go back to the blue book, scroll all the way to the left, look at your section size, and then you'll find the bending moment resistance, which is in our case for this section size, 171 kilonewton meters. So going back to the deflection limits, I feel it is a good idea that we need to check the dead load only situation. So repeating the same steps to work out the second moment of area required, except um, we're gonna be using the dead load only unfactored loads of 14 kilonewtons per meter. We actually work out that the second moment of area required is actually greater than the previous calculated second moment of area. Therefore, we need to increase the beam section size. So we can go back to the blue book and same process, 
check a steel section side with a greater second moment of area. Now we know that the previous beam that we used had a moment capacity which was greater than the design moment, so we don't really need to check that again. So there you have it, a very simple example on how to design a steel beam. It's really important that you get to grips with how to design these very quickly. Um, once you've gained more practice, you should be able to do these in about 5-10 minutes. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you've got any questions, please leave me a comment and I will try to respond back to you.